Hello again, in this video we're going to learn about counter operations. First, we'll see count up counter. Also we'll two another counters, count down, count up and down. Finally we'll use counter operations in a practical project. Let's start with count up counter, this is its ladder symbol. This instruction has some inputs outputs. Like timers, counters need a data block to work correctly. This instruction counts up by 1, when the value of the counter input, CU, changes from 0 to 1. Similar to timers, here we have reset and preset value terminal. Suppose the preset value is 3. Let's see how outputs change with this diagram. When we have a positive signal edge at counter input, this will have 1 in its count value, CV, it will increment by 1. So with another positive signal edge, the counter value change from 1 to 2. Finally, with next pulse, the counter value reach to 3, which is equal to its preset value. At this moment, the output changes from 0 to 1. For this counter, when the counter value is equal or greater than preset time, the output will be on. After this moment, if we have another positive pulse, the output will be on, but the counter value increment by 1. The counter continues its counting, until a positive signal edge, appears at its reset input. At this moment, the output goes to off, and the current value change to 0. Now, let's see this counter in TIA software. First, I insert a counter up, from the left list. Automatically, TIA request a data block for the counter, here, we can define a name for this data block. Now, let me connect counter inputs outputs to some addresses. I want to test this program with sim table. So I must delete this block, which have been inserted to use factory IO. Now let me to have a virtual PLC. Now, let me to create a sim table. If you remember, here, we've selected PLC inputs. Now, let's to have a better view.
All right, as you see, when I activate 0.0, .0 contact, the counter value increase, until reach to its preset value. At this moment, Q0.0 .0 output will be on. After that, the output remain on, and just the counter value increase. With second input, I can reset counter outputs to zero. As you see, when both output are activated simultaneously, the reset take priority over counting. So, to start counter again, I must inactive its reset input. Now, let me store this PLC with its settings. I will use that for next simulation. Well, we have been in online mode, but I've closed my PLC. TIA software detected, and shows this icon. Let me click on this icon, to go offline. We have seen count up counter, its syntax is CTU. Next counter is countdown, which can be detected with the syntax, CTD. This counter is like previous, but has a little different at its inputs, and works reversely. It counts from the preset value to zero. See this diagram. At the first time, the output is on. This counter has a load input instead of reset. When the RLO at this input change to one, the preset value load at the current value and the output will be off. Then with each positive pulse at the counter input, the current value decrease one step, until reach to zero. At this moment the output changed to on. For this counter, the output will be on, if the current value is equal or less than zero. With next pulses, the current value decrease and the output remain on. When we have another positive pulse at the load input, it transfers the preset value to the current value and turn off the output. Like previous counter, here, if both input are activated, the load command take priority over counting. Alright, now let's see this counter in TIA software, first. I insert a countdown counter to the previous program. At this time, I define suitable tags for my inputs.
pay attention, here, I've used MW0 which consist of byte 0 and 1. So, the next free address of memory is MW2. Now, I save this program and compile it. As you see, there is not any error or warning. To test my program, I need a virtual PLC. For this program, I open the virtual PLC, which I have stored at the preview simulation. Now I transfer my program to virtual PLC. Now let me change these inputs. As you see, at the first time, this output is on, when the load input is activated, this counter copies the preset value to counter value. Then with another input, I can decrease counter value until reach to zero, which turn on my output. With next pulses, the output will be on until next positive pulse at the load input. Pay attention, by default, the integer format is selected for numbers. It needs to 2 bytes, 16 bits. It can stores numbers from minus 32768 to 32767. Other format can be selected. For example double integer which need 4 bytes. So I need modify MW2 to MD2. Or select unsigned integers. With this format, we can store numbers from 0 to 65535 in 2 bytes. Let me go to FBD language. As you see, the ladder and FBD symbol of counters are similar together. Let me test this program. When the current value reach to 0, the output will be on, like previous test, but if we have another pulse at counter input, the current value won't be negative, unlike previous test. Because at unsigned format, the lowest number is zero. All right. In the next video, we'll see the last counter, and then we'll use them in a practical project. Thanks for watching.